I'm, uh, I'm Tim Pickens, and uh, we'll watch and see if it works better on video. That's my rocket bike, by the way. Uh, you didn't really think I was going to fire that, did you? No, I'm having some, uh, some technical problems there. Uh, but what we'll do is uh, today we're going to talk about uh, things that inspire me and hopefully uh, maybe inspire you too. So, so hopefully I'm not wasting too much time here today. Okay, let's get on into this. Um, let's talk about the early days, growing up in Huntsville, Alabama. We didn't have the internet, but these were a lot of books that my dad had around the house. So this was my internet. Problem mechanics, amateur scientists, rock encyclopedia, illustrated stuff that, uh, as I said up here, you know, this is all stuff you had before lawyers and the internet. Lawyers, because nowadays you can't get cool books that tell you how to do anything, because somebody's going to get sued. Anyways, but these things do, you know, influence us, they mold us, and they shape our future. You know, the TV programs we watched as kids, you know, that can intrigue and inspire us as well. The toys that we all played with. These were literally things that I had when I was a kid, and I'm sure some of you recognize some of these things. But they certainly foster creativity. I don't think this guy ever had a chance. This is Joe Dirt. But, you know, the pro we're certainly products of our environments, but it doesn't always seem to take. This is supposed to be a uh, ball rocket uh, on that uh, cow's tail. And it, he really did that in the movies, but, you know, that's Hollywood. But anyways, you know, way back in the early 90s, um, I was doing a lot of rocket stuff at home and at nights and doing consultant work. And I got hooked up with a local group called Hell 5, the National Space Society, and we built a rocket that actually um, went to 36 miles. We set a Guinness Book World Records, and we built that in my shop in Madison, not too far from here, you know, and um, we ended up building bigger rockets, wanting to do bigger things. I ended up working a lot of companies around Huntsville that were building rocket engines and hardware and trying to go to space on the cheap. These weren't large companies. The most of them were less than 20 employees. I think, um, to be effective in the world that I wanted to work in, that's designing and manufacturing, I felt like experience was uh, king. So I wanted to go chase things where I could get to build and get my hands on stuff. I ended up starting a company back in uh, 2004. It's called Orion Propulsion. I ended up selling it uh, five years later to Dynetics here in Huntsville. I ended up getting to do things like design a propulsion system with a, with a great team of people I hired. Mr. Bigelow is a guy we did this program for, and he's the guy who owns Budget Suites of America, and he asked me to step down from a position of uh, CEO and, and, and lead the technical design for the first uh, green propulsion system for his manned space station. So, you might get to design a propulsion system for a space hotel, if you want to do that. I wanted to do that. Um, anyways, this is kind of what Orion looked like after 2009, and we had about a third commercial, a third DOD, and a third NASA. We built a lot of hardware, by the way, for a lot of different companies, and we've worked for folks, uh, a lot of folks here in Huntsville, you know, a lot of, you know, from, uh, the Boeings to the uh, to NASA to uh, a lot of other folks. Well, you know, part of your exploration, and you might decide you want to build a spaceship. I wanted to share a couple some facts with you. You know, 12 Americans have walked on the moon. No human has left the Earth Earth's orbit since 1972. That's 40 years ago, by the way. 2001, Paul Allen, Paul Allen started Microsoft, who started Microsoft, funded Burt Rutan, his team developed the world's first commercial spaceship to put humans into space. He did it for $25 million and probably a team of less than 50 people, by the way. Made three successful flights in 2004. They won the $10 million X Prize. It now hangs in the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. 
and no privately funded spaceships have flown astronauts to space in the last seven years since then. Why is that? And that all happened, by the way, the fact is that endeavor happened all within three years. But it's hanging in the Smithsonian. Just something to think about. For me, I got to move to Mojave for a while before I started Orion, and I got to work for Burt Rutan leading the propulsion system for Spaceship One, which was really cool. And believe it or not, things like the rocket bike inspired Rutan to say, you know, that, hey, you're, you're a little different. <laughs> you're, you are, uh, you're not like the other guys. You do stuff. And he saw my shop, and he was real intrigued. I think it reminded him of the way they do a lot of things back out at his company, Scaled. But, um, but these are the areas I got to lead on that program. It's propulsion, RCS. In fact, I've got one of the thrusters that I developed, and it's setting out here on the table, if you want to go look at that after this, uh, after this talk today or on our break. Uh, it's one that actually flew my development thruster, and I flew it in the back seat. We had to fly 400 pounds the back seat to meet the mission requirement. And that thruster was one of the, that and a bunch of wrenches and things were the, the, the uh, what we flew. But it's out there and also the door that we cut out for Spaceship One, if you wanna know what that ship was made of, it's sitting out there too. So you might get to uh, go to the moon. You might decide down the road that you wanna to go to the moon. You know, we're trying to go to the moon. Dynetics is leading a $30 million Google's prize and we're, our team is the Rocket City Space Pioneers. And we're trying to do it affordably. And uh, we've got to do this thing by 2014. And basically what we're doing is trying to sell rides on a Falcon 9. This is a rocket developed by uh, Elon Musk, a guy who started PayPal, who's got a commercial rocket. And we're, and we're brokering rides, multiple payloads on here to pay for this. This is an engine we developed to land this on the moon softly. That engine is sitting out here on the table. We brought it out today. I'd like you guys to come by and take a look at it. But it's something we developed in the last few months. It was tested right here in Huntsville. It's cool stuff. You might build a rocket truck. <laughs> you know, you're in Alabama. Everybody's got a truck. <laughs> there it is. On the, uh, on the bumper here, I put in thrust we trust. Right there. <laughs> So uh, that's pretty cool. But you know, I want to make a point here. You know, rocket pickup trucks, you know, even serious fun projects require a great team and serious planning if you want to live to tell about it. That's why my title up here says, Explore, Have Fun, and Live to Tell About It. That's real important, by the way, because some <laughs> of the stuff that I'm doing, normally you don't get to live to tell about it if you don't do your homework. Even things like that rocket bike, if you don't do your homework and design things safely, you're gonna have problems. When you're straddling up a propellants like that, it's never fun when things go bad. Uh, but anyway, I'll give you an example of the kind of uh, in-depthness that we go into. First of all, I want an ergonomic controller for it. Guess what I used? Xbox controller. <laughs> and I ended up modifying it, but it's everything you need there to give you 2,700 pounds of thrust and there's the system, uses 100 pounds of nitrous oxide. And by the way, it's got a lot of cool little bells and whistles. It's the cutaway from the top. Did all the finite element on the structure, by the way. We also did it on the motor case. This is just some of the data generated. By the way, for you uh, Xboxers, that left button underneath, let me go back to this, hold on. Oh gosh, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. So, Rocket man cannot work electronics. Um, <laughs> right there, by the way, that's the left button underneath the Xbox control. That's called stage one. That gets you up there close to, uh, let's see, I think that was about 1,700 pounds of thrust, and that'll take you up to 2,700 pounds of thrust. That's the right button for you kids out there who want to use this rocket truck someday uh, <laughs> on a date. Um, but anyways, here's the video of that rocket truck being tested uh, out here near the airport, I think. Um, I don't know where our audio is. There's something. It didn't sound like that, by the way. It sounded like a hammer. But anyway, it really uh, is pretty cool. Or you might want to build a better jet, jet pack. You know, for the last 50 years, 
jetpacks basically have been flying and there have been no breakthroughs. They've been flying for like, you can get 22 to 40 seconds out of them. If you wanna go on a really thin diet, you might could go 45 seconds, but most of us guys don't weigh 120 pounds. And uh, so that's a problem. So I'm thinking, and this is how it's always been done. You just got, you know, hydrogen peroxide, these blue tanks and a pressurization gas and a gas generator and, and it's hydrogen peroxide. And it's, so what I'm doing is my latest home project, by the way, is this guy on the right. These are polyethylene tanks. We're building a pump, me and some friends at home, Mark Wells, Anthony Brinkley, Don Parker, we all got together at the man cave. I went to put some pictures of the latest man cave in here. You need to go to www.timpickens.com, by the way. You'll see the latest man cave. But we're building this thing, and we want to actually be able to build large tanks out of polyethylene, low pressure, and we're going to have a turbine. We're actually going to be pumping the propellants, and we'll be able to run this thing for well over a minute. So this is cool. This is privately funded and it's financed by sales on eBay and wherever else I can get the money. We are taking donations, by the way. No, just kidding. Oh, this guy here. Now, this is a day our, actually the rocket bike worked pretty good. Maybe we'll have another chance at it here in a minute. This is a... Uh, this is a rocket bike. This is a rocket bike. So it does work. Uh, just not indoors that good. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, let's see, yeah, let's move on. You know, here's some parting shots, by the way. Uh, I do encourage everyone to take matters into your own hands. You know, I say if you dream it and don't build it, it will always work perfectly. <laughs> um, and also, no one will ever get hurt. And also, it would have been fun and you will never learn, you know, you will never learn nothing new or anything new. You will make no breakthroughs and you will risk nothing that is time, money, image, security, and bodily injury, I assure you. These are things I've been thinking about the last few days. And remember, things don't always work uh, in the real world, especially when on TV, by the way. And with that, I will leave you with the show coming the up. We bike. got the rocket. The, is the uh, show coming up called asphalt, uh, Mad asphalt, Scientists. Right? You make your street out of asphalt. Yeah, asphalt. it's coming Roof on uh, November 16th. National Geographic. Well, the thing about it is, asphalt. I can buy. This guy I come to visit me, and we built a flying machine. By the way, that you want to, if you're interested in cool stuff, we built <laughs> thrust, some cool trust. stuff. In fact, Amy Robinson was a great you. test pilot. <laughs> your, are you healed from those injuries, Amy? Okay, she's doing good. My brother down here, Barry, is a test pilot. Yeah. Anyway, so this guy decides he wants to come to Huntsville and be a man and ride this thing. And it had not been ridden for years. Ignition. All right, we got fire. What's the kick of this thing when he hits the button? We don't have nothing. We're nothing. See? Now that's just, see, that's his cold nitrous right there. I can't. By the way, this is my final video. We didn't I'll, produce I'll, real props from but, uh, the rocket engine. We did so several things on this show the day they were Round here. Round two. Go. You got fire. Let's try it again. He was scared, Butcher. too, by the way. Oh, there we go. You see it kicked him. Oh, Maybe three is a Clearly charm. A I was running out of igniters yeah, that day, and I was, yeah, a sticky I was getting man. tired of the high tech of rocket science. I totally control is suffering. And you'll here. see what I end up <laughs> doing for uh, ignition. So Tim's ignition system isn't working, but he has a new idea. So what I want to do is take this coat hanger, and I just want to make a little yeah. hook like a fish yeah. hook. So I'm going to tape this to one of these. Uh, Igniters we made. This is a uh, cannon fuse. Did he just say cannon fuse? Yeah. You're fixing the bike with cannon fuse and a coat hanger. That's it, man. I'm starting to be reminded of the cartoons I watched as a kid. All right. All right, we're armed. And dangerous. And I'm gonna light this torch and I'm gonna light this candle. Does that not look, look like a cartoon? So now I'm sitting on a bike with a bomb wow. attached to it and cannon fuse behind me burning. This no, I needed to get my wheels feeling. aligned too. Look, pay close attention to the front wheel. Real close attention. We got. Oh, he 
somewhat off the button, guys. But he was he he, he was moving on pretty good. Um, okay. But anyway. That's fun. <laughs> so as you can see, we uh, we do things that work sometimes. You know. Um, well, thank you. Um, but I do encourage you if you like funny, weird stuff. Um, Check out the National Geographic. It's going to be mad scientists. I think it's November 16th. I think I'm done. Um, let me, I may try this rocket bike one more time, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Let me go get out of here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and see if it goes. Um, I think I can go right through here. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it go this time. All right, I'm going to arm it. Stand aside. Huh. Hope I remember how to do this. Well, it's not working, folks. <laughs>